like I've spent my whole life hoping, dreaming of things I've never tried, tangled in knots just waiting for my time to shine. What if the doors began to open? What if the knots became untied? What if one day nothing stood in my way and the world was mine? Would it feel this Hello and welcome back to Patreon with Cheese, and I am joined, as always, by my w- wonderful editor and co-host Elizabeth Essen. Say hello, Liz. Hello, I am here. What are we talking about today? We're back with Tangled, the land of Pangaea nineteen, the land of, of COVID somethings. Didn't we give it like a funnier name or something? Ah, uh, the beer, the beer kingdom, beer kingdom. Let's the go, beer kingdom, the beer garden, uh, the beer garden. Not- Let's not waste any more time. Um, we are on episode 11, 11 and 12. Um, we're going to start with Pascal's story. I like this episode. I liked it too. It was very cute. Um, what happens, Liz? So Pascal is very homesick. Very sad. Rapunzel's very busy now and doesn't have time for him. They used to be best friends and spend all their time together. Now they don't. You want to know my favorite part of this episode? <laughs> what? So there's a part where Pascal is feeling real low, been abandoned by Rapunzel and kind of disheveled all day. And we hear Rapunzel be like to Flynn, like, oh, my God, you're still my best friend. Second <laughs> fucking Pascal. And I'm like, bro, I know Pascal murdered for you, but this motherfucker died for yeah. you. Yeah. He, they, he literally died for her. <laughs> like, and you're just like, oh my god, you're my best friend right next to this fucking cockroach or whatever. Except for my chameleon. lizard friend. Like, not only are you allowed, not allowed to sleep in the same room or whatever, like, you friend zoned <laughs> the guy that you're gonna marry so hard. He's been friend zoning him for nearly 10 episodes. Like, <laughs> no wonder I feel like Cassandra and Eugene have much more sexual chemistry. So do Cassandra and Rapunzel. Everyone has sexual chemistry except for Eugene. Eugene and um 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 what's his name? Uh James from Noah Eagleheart. Strongbow. Heart. They have some They'd be a great couple. Oh that, that who's the power bottom? Uh Strongbow. Nah, I think Eugene. Yeah. Eugene likes to be held. Uh if there's any Strongbow Eugene fanfiction out there, let us know. Yeah, no one sent us fanfic yet. Um, Someone sent us fanfiction. We will read it on on this. I, and I if you think. write it yourself, we'll definitely read it. Oh, hell yeah. Who send us that? <laughs> <laughs> um, Jess Lady Kane stuff. Let's go. Oh. You know, we're just friends. You know, we're friends. Yeah, we're Disney friends, and we happen to live in the same apartment with one bed. I guess I'll take the floor. You don't have to stay down there, you know. No, Jess is writing fanfiction. <laughs> <laughs> live on um, the air. Live on the I, I mean, what is, <laughs> imagine like the Orson Welles days of where everyone's like doing radio and it's just like fanfiction. Like, you don't have to sleep on the floor, you know. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> and then you just hear the rain like, like fake sound effects going on. That would be that. That should be a meme somewhere. Not even a meme, like a college humor video. <laughs> Too bad it's dead. College humor's dead. It's basically dead. Okay, is it like crap.com? They, ju- they just upload dropout content now. That's dropout content. It's their streaming service that very few people pay for. All right, I learned. They make exclusive content that's actually pretty good, but I watch the free version because I'm not giving them my money. Um. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking to people that do give us our money, and this is their their streaming yes. content. Is this an ASMR video now? No, I can't. No, I don't. I am not Juliet Antonio. I cannot do ASMR. <laughs> no, no, no. I cannot stand it. Um, if you're into it, you're into it. I guess. I, I firmly um, respect you. I I listened to a little bit of it once, and it made me uncomfortable, and so I stopped. <laughs> I want Yoda ASMR, where he's like, "Yes, you must put the lightsaber." <laughs> Or Baby Yoda ASMR, where he's just like sipping his broth. <laughs> that's I've all. Never that's se- the- I've never seen the Mandalorian. I just assumed that that's what he does. He just makes noises like. <sighs> <sighs> um. So- 
sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. Andrew just sent me another video of him yo-yoing. <laughs> That is the height of our conversation with one another. That yo-yo master video was great. <laughs> yeah, he sent me that, and I sent him that back, and I was like, I'm posting this, and he's like, whatever. <laughs> the most Andrew response. I love Andrew to death, but he Andrew's does not so good. give a shit if anyone lives or dies. <laughs> Bless him. Um, anyway, speaking of living or dying, Pascal, he we nearly can see his dies. story. Basically, Pascal was running away from a snake with giant teeth. Yeah. Not very proportioned to their body. It's some anime logic. I'm just throwing that out there. No, no, no. This is a special kind of mystery snake. That's true. It's a mystery snake. Uh, so he runs into a tower with a small child in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then the small child beats the snake with a stick so badly. No, that no, the it's teeth not a stick. Out. It's a frying pan. Oh, yes, because branding. Branding. He only beats you with a frying pan. So she beats it with a frying pan so hard that the takes snake's teeth fall out, which is yeah, and it like goes out the window or something. It's really kind of a messed up image. I'm not gonna lie. I it's mean, really, yeah. Um, so she saves Pascal with her hair from the brink of death. So I guess yeah. Pascal and Eugene have that in common. Yeah, there's a song finally. There's some singing. Oh yeah. We, she sings the flower gleaming glow Donna Murphy song. Yeah, the incant- incantation song that she sang in the first movie. Yeah, that was there. But she also sings a song at the end when she and Pascal get back together about like how they're buddies again. Yeah, and I looked up the title. It's literally called The Friendship Song. Great job, Alan Menken. <laughs> 10 out of 10 to you guys. Good job. Also, it's two seconds long. <laughs> hey, you know, it, it works. Um, It's a cute song. I have nothing to say song. about it cute monumentally, episode. but it goes in one ear out the other. But... Yeah, um... Cassandra's like, oh, fuck you and your stupid friends. We got stuff to do. And then she seems a little turned on when Rapunzel stands up for herself. Like, now that's a woman with power. She does, though. <laughs> like, Eugene's like, hey, that's a woman talking back. Cassandra's like, I want you to peg me. <laughs> no, God. What's the Disney equivalent of that? Um, I want you to hold my hand so there we, we can leave an implication for audiences, but never actually show it. Very Legend of Korra of you. Hey, I'll give that show credit for trying. <laughs> they tried at least. Good on them. You know what? That that was uh, gay baiting, sure. But you yeah. know what? I, I need to bait to something. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Nothing God. brings me more joy than just catching you in wordplay and making <laughs> you angry. Dear Lord. Um, I like this episode fine. I just, it leans a little too hard on the cuteness of whatever, uh, Pascal, and I'm just like, eh, yeah. I'm all right with that. I'm all like right the, with that in my life. I do like the silent parts where pa- Pascal's just doing stuff. Yeah. They do, it's also re- kind of a bummer, though. Yeah, it's really a bummer, but it's really good storytelling. Also, Strong was in this episode for five seconds. Right. He's showing uh-huh. up a lot, because, like, we've got the context of the next four episodes, um, and he's popping up. Same with Monty. He's popping up a lot more. Yeah, like, it was, I, it was nice to see him, but I didn't know why he was there. I was like, wait. I thought he ran away. Didn't he like steal a bunch of stuff? No, I think he returned. Didn't he return stuff? No, I'm getting conflated with a different episode. He donated it. He donated it. But he has a much bigger part in the next episode. So why don't we talk about that? The Big Brothers of Corona. Yes. Yes. What's going on there? Okay, so there's this thief on the loose stealing stuff very quickly. But spoiler alert. Guard can't catch it. But guess what? It's two kids in a trench coat. Two little girls in a trench coat. Vince, an adult man, but in Disney form. Yeah. Um. So then we got Flynn and Strongbow. They got to take them under their wing by order of the king. Um, yeah. So, so like, hey, make them not thieves anymore. Yeah. Then there's the B plot where Cassandra breaks her leg. I don't remember. A- How did she break her leg? Rapunzel made a trap for the thief that was caught oh, two yeah. minutes afterwards. <laughs> Um, and Cassandra got caught in it and then fell 30 feet to the ground or something. And then Rapunzel is to learn that Cassandra doesn't want help all the time. It's a good lesson to learn, but we've learned it five. You froze. Okay, you're back. <laughs> um, Yeah, it's a good lesson, but we've learned it like nine times by now, Tangled the series. Yeah, I, I get it. Rapunzel needs to learn space isn't a thing, but we can't, we got to stop teaching her it. Like, come on. Come on, she could learn other things. Like, she I don't know. She needs to learn. What was the lesson of turning red? Just teach her that. 
Yeah, I watched half of that. Tampons. Tampons are a thing to Rapunzel. I haven't seen any of Turning Red. That's the plot, right? No, no. There is, there's no actual periods. It's just her turning into a giant panda. Then why does her mom bring tampons to school? Because it's a metaphor. <laughs> Wait, did pads actually stop the panda from coming out? I don't know. I, won't, I only watched an hour. <laughs> So, I, I'm confu- I just remember them being like, oh my god, tampons! To no, quote there's the a vine. Scene, no, there's a scene where she's like, after the first time she turned to the panda, she's in the bathroom, and she's like, mom, something's happening, something's wrong with my body, and then the mom assumes it's a period. So she takes out a bunch of pads and tampons, like, I have all this ready for you when this occurs. That's why people are getting their, their knickers up in knots. Really? Because they mention period products in a Disney movie. Boo-hoo. Like, who cares? <laughs> Call, call me old fashioned, but I, I I like it when women's vaginas just don't exist. Yeah, essentially, that's the argument. Um, I mean, I'm... even when we were young, we were forced to watch both genders puberty tapes that were awkwardly explaining how puberty works. So yeah, I I, I, I wish I wish that we would just educate all the kids on everything. And yeah. you know what? Educating them through a medium like animated films is very effective. Yeah. I, I am more able to retain knowledge about this. And what a boys media like aimed at kids learn? What did any boy learn from Transformers that if you can punch harder, you can also buy a Transformer toy? Like, what is um, it? Robots are cool? That's a terrible lesson. Robots aren't cool. They'll kill us all. They might one day. I have a robot back in my house now. So A robot vacuum? Yes. How does it go upstairs? It doesn't go upstairs. It stays on one floor. Oh, no. It's okay. He just does the, he just does his thing when we schedule him to. Okay. I mean, what if he wants to go rogue, do his own thing? Are you really think... being a slave in your house? A slave of technology? No, I think he's too dumb to take over my house because I've seen him slam into the same counter four times in a row, multiple times, and it's deeply entertaining. Well, maybe next time the table won't be there. No, it's fixed in a singular place. It will not not move. Honestly, I don't appreciate your attitude towards the robots. And hey, those hey, my robot vacuum has a name. His name is Nigel, and he's um, great. Is that the name you gave it? Um, no, my I'm dad sure. named the robot vacuum because he bought it. Are you sure it didn't have another name before that? It was named iRobata, which is the name yeah. of the company that made it. I'm disappointed in you, Elizabeth Eston. I thought you were more progressive than this. <laughs> Literally, we only bought it so my mom doesn't have to vacuum the kitchen every three days. Oh, oh, so it's easier on your mom. Yeah, she work hard. Okay, I don't know. I don't know where my metaphor is going here. But uh, so Strongbow and Flynn or Eugene, not the Eugene, dead name. whatever his name is. Um, They have to take care of these two rascally, rascally children who just want to steal. They just want to steal stuff. But then you yeah, discover cause... why they need to steal stuff. Because they had a tragic backstory. Yeah, they're in trouble with the Baron, who was set up in a previous episode, I think. Um, yeah. They, Flynn and Strongbow have a conflict with them, and they'll forever be in debt to him. It's so like the kids baby are driver. Like, yeah, baby driver. So the kids are like, oh, oh crap, we're screwed. We gotta run away. And you know what? They learn a lesson at the end about stealing being bad. Okay. Yeah. And they return all the stuff. Yeah. And Flynn gives uh, one of them, the one with the most lines of dialogue, uh, the first thing he ever stole, which great. is a comb. Great, 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 great job. Great. I'm glad you did that, Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> I think the idea was just like, so like to see you remember the one thing someone gave you without you stealing it. It's just like, okay. But you stole it first. Yeah, but it was a stolen object. <laughs> you know, we, we've previously given a lot of sh- credit to this show for being like a very effective, like, you know, kids are learning lessons. This this episode, not so much. Yeah, what lessons? The lessons we, we learned were basic life lessons, which is don't steal. But this one, it, it's complicated about don't steal. And this isn't even the first don't steal message we've had. This one's just a worse version of the don't steal message. The main character is literally a thief. We get the don't steal message every week. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I also will point out, they do mention that, like, in the previous episode, what this they're approaching the tower, Eugene is like, hey, I don't really, really like to go to locations where I die twice. Where I die, <laughs> where I died or something. And I thought that was legitimately funny. I mean, he did legitimately die, and then her magic tears um, revived Saved. him. 
I thought that was stupid when I watched the movie the first time. So. It's from the book. It's from the one part of the narrative. At least they introduced it and set it up as part take of a, the hair. I took a fairy tales class and I don't remember that. <laughs> I only know it because of Into the Woods because that's true. Rapunzel was thrown into a swamp and forced to bear children. And then the prince is blinded and he wanders yeah. the swamp and finds her. And then her tears magically heal his eyes. So I that do comes remember that from the original story and they just integrated the tears as part of the hair yeah i mean i've only seen the movie even to the woods unfortunately so yeah <sighs> yeah i never got oh, to the pro oh, oh no <laughs> that, that yeah. hurt me i'm sorry i i do i did know it was a musical beforehand uh, i just uh first time i watched it was the movie version. why would you do that to yourself you deserve happiness liz <laughs> Well, when your parents want to go see a movie and you're like a teenager and you I'm like free even, stuff. I'm not saying you shouldn't have seen the movie. I'm saying you shouldn't have only seen the movie. I know the pro shot is on my watch list. Like I, it's so flipping good. I'm going good. to watch it. I have a link like ready to go. I, it's part of the links I sent you for the Sondheim video. Yeah, same with Sunday in the park with George. Like I have a, I on my random YouTube homepage it was like this isn't Sunday in the park with George. <laughs> It's like, okay, I'm going to put this in my favorites real quick so I can get back to it later. You, you, sometimes you make baffling choices, Elizabeth Eston. And yet you're watching Bridgerton season two. I haven't actually watched it, so. You're probably going to start watching Flag Means Death or whatever the Taika Waititi show Hey, that show was good. I, I'm watching it right now, but, you know, yeah. Into the Woods is probably better. I know, but, you, you know. know. I, I just don't want you to deprive yourself of some of the best musical theater out there. I know. I know you don't want me to. Like, I want you to, ha like, if you wake up tomorrow and you're not alive, I you, I'm <laughs> saying is ask. I want you to have experienced uh, yes, Into I will the Woods in a proper way. I literally have to for the Sondheim videos, so I will. <laughs> Well, you didn't watch all the Andrew Lloyd Webber stuff. It's like, true, you... but I, I did I did watch some of it on my own. All right. Wow. Um, oh, I watched a good a... chunk of Evita without having to work on it. I was just watching it. Evita is such a good movie. It's really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back to Tangled, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I like to apologize to everyone listening for my poor education. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> Maybe we should have musical movie nights so we can like sh like show Liz um the blank spots at her musical theater knowledge. Maybe that could be a Patreon thing. Like every Saturday or every other Saturday, we do like a musical movie thing where we watch like the Into the Woods Pro Shot or whatever. So we we can force Elizabeth Eston to watch all these shows. That's a very bad marketing standpoint for this Patreon concept. What? Let's force my editor to watch stuff. <laughs> Let's watch Liz Eston watch other stuff, but we'll do it all together on a Discord server. I'll set it up. Everyone can watch like all together. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I can give you access to versions that you've never seen before. I will watch them. They're on my list now that I'm doing this stuff. You've so. been saying that since we started this podcast. I know, and you still haven't but I've been busy either. working on stuff for you, man. No, you haven't. <laughs> I have sometimes. Yes, you have. Angelie Weber video was a beast. Yeah, that was a beast. And now you're I gonna... wanted to watch Avita. I did not have time. You're gonna have to tangle with another beast soon. Oh, I know. I'm ready. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Ready. I'm really scared about this video, <laughs> and it gets good. bigger and bigger the more I think about it. I'm terrified it's gonna be like an eight-hour victorious. Oh god, spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I computer can handle an eight-hour export. <laughs> uh like I think about it, I'm like, man, that sounds daunting. I think like, it is. I, I might have a conniption. Do I include video games? No, don't include video games. Liz, I mean, if he did video games, like, how could I not include it? You d make a section of random shit he's done and just mention it. No. Or just make it two parts. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I, I legitimately thought about that one. Just make it two parts. There's clearly a lot happening here. It's a lot happening. It's going to be fun. Um, it, it'll be interesting. But he's just been alive for so fucking long. And now that he isn't, it's kind of depressing to look at this stuff. Not going to lie. Yeah, that's valid. 
Um, I do remember that in 1994, Stephen Sondheim was going to go into video gaming because he was so disillusioned with the musical theater market and he just wanted to make video games. Oh, God. Um, so, so there's that side of it. Um, there's songs in both of these, right? There are no, no, there isn't songs in the second no, one. No, there's only the friendship song in the first one. What do you think of that song? It's a song. <laughs> yeah. It has, it's about friendship. It's less than a minute. Uh, yeah. It has a yeah. terrible title. <laughs> Good job, Alan Megan. Um, I'll blame Glenn, Glenn Slater. That title could only have come from the man who wrote Love Never Dies. Yeah. Oh, he did write that. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Wait, but he wrote a six-minute magnum opus about fucking without the moon in the sky. Like, I have to respect that. I mean, so did the guy that wrote, You look better with the lights off, better with the lights off. Yeah, but that song isn't six minutes long. It contains weirdly graphic weirdly graphic depictions of two people fucking for six minutes. You know what? You're right. Oh, God. Liz, I'm sorry. I- I'm going into the Sondheim side of it again. Back to Sondheim. But it's do, I include, now. do I include Tick Tick Boom since he has a voice cameo and oh a physical? God. This is a question. You mentioned it. There's not much to say about a voice cameo. You this is the last it. physical appearance he put into a piece of media. Well, we have to mention it then, but we we can't. We're, we're not going to talk about it for 15 minutes. Do I mention that in the 1974 production of June Moon on Great Performances, he plays a character called Maxie Schwartz? Can I even find this? Maxie Schwartz is very close to an Australian drag queen that was on Drag Race Down Under. I'm just saying. Oh. Anyway, her name is Maxie Max- Shield. Maxie Shield. Maxie Shield. Love Maxie Shield. She's very underrated. She's been gone home. Anyway. Um... Do I mention the two movies that he was the composer for? No, dude, you can't mention everything he's ever done. <laughs> this has got to be a comprehensive list, Liz. I know, but you you can't include everything in detail. You can include everything like shorthand, but you can't include everything in detail. Okay. This is an Android Weber situation where he's done like eight things, and that's it. I, Sondheim has been involved with so fucking much; it's still daunting me to like even go back to writing it. Oh God. Um, but I probably will have to do a co- like film compositions, film like yeah. film songs appearance that he's written and ap- appearances. appearances, and then we could close it on this the his appearance in Tick Tick Boom and Bradley Whitford's dive nope. into him playing Sondheim. We gotta close it with West Side Story twenty twenty. We do twenty twenty one. You mean whatever? It was twenty twenty for so long. It and was. Then, then they changed it to be because you know the novel coronavirus. I don't know if any of you guys have heard about that. Yeah, the beer disease virus. Oh yeah, the the tangled kingdom virus. The beer kingdom, the tangled kingdom virus. That's um, a better name for it. So Elizabeth Eston, what is your overall thoughts on these episodes of Tangled the Series and your cheese rating? Uh, they're fine. Uh, I thought Pascal's was cute. Um, very dark, which I appreciated because this show is very cutesy. So some dark moments are a bit of a relief. Yeah. Uh, first one was better than the second one. I don't know what the lesson was besides don't steal. I mean, stealing is bad, okay? Stealing is bad, but I learned that four episodes ago, probably. I don't know. Half, um, half the lessons are don't steal. You're right. Half the lessons are don't steal, but maybe someone should fucking listen already. Yeah. <laughs> Strongbow, looking at Strongbow, you, Strongbow, Eugene. Strongbow, James Monroe, I- Iglehart. Stop stealing. Stop. St- you personally, James Monroe Iglehart. Stop stealing. He was a method actor for this role, clearly. I just had to keep stealing, you know? I just had to keep doing it. Stealing the hearts of America by playing a genie. <laughs> um, stealing the hearts of America, um, as long along with chocolate. Yes, yes. Okay, um, so cheese ratings. I'm gonna give the first episode eleven a uh, friendship cheese, a uh, fr- cheese to share with your friends. Because oh, you're gonna what? share that cheese with me? Yeah, of course I will. Of course no, I will. That's, that's Whatever really cheese sad. you want. Well, that's uh, sad, Liz, because you and I aren't friends. You've told me this many times before. You and I are just casual acquaintances, collaborators. Well, We're just work partners and nothing more. People don't listen to him. Don't listen to him. She technically hates me and is only here by contractual obligation. <laughs> Literally not here by contractual obligation. <laughs> we have signed no contracts. Yeah. We um, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm here. I'm here because I, I like it here. So, you know, and yeah. episode 12, I'll give it a brotherly cheese. I guess. Brotherly of cheese. Brother cheese. Or sister cheese, I guess. 
Oh yeah, because they are ladies. They're ladies. Lunch. Yeah, that was my bet. So sister cheese. Cheese to share with your sister if you have one, which I do. All righty. Um, I will give both of these some Gouda because you know what? It's pretty Gouda. Yeah, not a bad choice. All right. Elizabeth Eston. I think that's it for this t- episode of Patreon with Cheese. Is the back Anything half of this episode an ASMR video? Anything else you want to say? Anything you want to say? This is for you, Juliet Antonio. Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'd like to say I'm sorry to Juliet Antonio uh, for having to listen to that. If she's listening, the best part is she listening. doesn't. She's she's not. Are they're not on the Patreon? Yeah. <laughs> so we're literally saying this to someone who will not hear this. Yeah. Shout out to Juliet Antonio though. We talk about love is blind and in, on Instagram quite a bit. It's fun. But we'll see you next time. Maybe we should have them on an episode. Yeah. You should DM d- them. See if they'd be interested. Oh, yeah, totally. All right. We'll see you next time on the Tangle the Series bullshit on Patreon with Cheese. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Seems like I've spent my whole life hoping, dreaming of things I've never tried. Tangled in knots, just waiting for my time to shine. What if the doors began to open? What if the knots became untied? What if one day nothing stood in my way and the world was mine? Would it feel this?